Hello, so today I'm going to be going over how to make uh, timing pulleys and belts in SolidWorks. For our example, we're going to use this HTD, it's HTT, that's funny, uh, but HTD5 profile, so this is just pulled off the internet. We're going to use this as our um, reference to make the pulleys. So you're going to start by creating a new metric part, in this case because it's HD5, and then we're going to make some variables. So the first one is going to be n, which is going to be our number of teeth. Let's say we want 24 teeth. The second is going to be our pitch. If it's HDD5, it's going to be 5 millimeters. Our pitch diameter, which is this line right here, if you wrap that around a circle, it is equal to our number of teeth times our pitch times divided by pi, and then our what other variables will we want? We'll want a belt width. I like to add some tolerance to this. So if it's a 9 millimeter belt, I like to make it 9.5 millimeters. So I'll add a comment that this is plus 0 0.5 millimeters to width. Um, and then what else could we do? You can add flanges. So if we wanted to do add flange width, And let's say that's 2.5, or how about just 2 millimeters? And then lastly, let's add a bore diameter. And let's say that is 12 millimeters, or how about 10? Okay. So now that we have these values set, we're going to start by making a sketch. On in this case, I chose the front plane, and we're going to have two circles. So first one is going to be equal to your pitch diameter, and your second one is going to be equal to your bore diameter, which would be there we go. And now that we have this, we're going to extrude it and use a midplane extrude so that we have a nice center plane. And that's going to be equal to our, let's see, what do we call that, our belt width. And so now we have a nice space that we can work with and cut some teeth out of. So we're going to make a sketch on here. And we're going to have two lines. So the first line is going to be at some arbitrary angle up that way. And then we're going to have a line that's straight up and down. And then there will be three curves. And the dimensions for these curves, we can extrapolate based on that drawing that was shown earlier in the video. Just pulled off the internet. And there we go. Maybe not the cleanest curve yet, but we'll clean it up. So, whoop, wrong way. <laughs> so let's make these two tangents. And then these two should already be tangents, but I like to just throw it on. Oh, nope, they were not. There you go. And so then we want to make sure these centers are cocentric, or not cocentric, coincident, which we'll do this one later, I think. But we want to make sure that this is going to end up coincident with this line. So from the drawing, this is 0 0.43 millimeters. And this is 1.49 millimeters. This line needs to be flatter. Let's see if we can make that coincident yet. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to set the distance between the this point right here, which is on the edge, and then we want to make sure that this is vertical, so in this case, coincident. And we're going to set this distance to, if we go and look back at our drawing, this is the distance to the pitch diameter from this point right here. And then using these two values, we can come up with 3.8 minus 2.06 divided by 2, and that'll give us our 0.87. And then we're going to set this distance out here to 
that same value, but adding 2.06 to it. And that gives us 2.93. And then lastly, we have to set our angle right here. So that's going to be equal to 180, because this is just half of a 2, divided by the number of teeth. And there we go. We have that together. Oh, this has to not only be coincident with that, but also the origin. So we'll fix that real quick. And there you go, you have half two. And so I'm going to set these two to be construction line. And then I'm going to mirror all of these entities across this axis, which will delete that 2.93 dimension. So we'll have to reset that. But other than that, it gives us the rest of the two. Come on. There we go. And then I like to add these going up to the edge. And then we'll make our convert entities, get the pitch diameter circle there, and then trim off the excess. And now we can extrude this all the way through. So through all, I already have it set there. And now you have one tooth extruded, and then you can use the circular pattern tool to make this as many times as there are teeth. So in this case, we want uh, equals n. And there you go, you have your pulley. So if you want to do flanges, you make a circle that is whatever your flange diameter you want is. I don't know, let's make that 39. And then we're going to use convert entities to share our bore circle. And then we're going to extrude this to a blind distance of equals flange width. There we go. And then we can always mirror this to the other side. Our mirror plane will be our wherever we made our sketch originally. And then that's our feature. And then I like to add chamfers to it as well to help guide the, guide the belt a little. And there you go. You have a timing pulley. So now that we have our timing pulley, how are we going to make a timing belt? So first I'm going to go into our equations, and let's give two pitch diameters. So PD1 equals, let's say, this is our 35, our, sorry, our 24 tooth pulley, so that'll be 24 times 5 divided by pi, which we pulled from our other, um, other part. But you could also, if you're doing this in an assembly, you could reference this dimension directly. Um, so then let's do PD2, and this is going to be, uh, let's say 48, 48 times 5 over 5. So that's a 48 tooth pulley. So there's our two, um, uh, two dimensions that we have, and then for our pulley pitch diameters. So if we want to make a belt, we're going to make the first one equal to PD. And then let's have another one, a set distance away at, first let's make these horizontal. And we'll call this PD, or make this equivalent to PD2. Equals global variable PD2. Is this pulley going to float around still? Yeah. Because we don't have it constrained this way which is okay, because a lot of times you'll set your center distance based on your, well, you can do it two ways. You can either add a tensioner and have a set or a perfect center to center and have your um, center distance as your driving factor, but in this case, I'm gonna have our belt length as our driving factor. So this is all tangent, except for this one. So this is the outer, the pitch profile, the pitch circle of our belt. So now I'm going to trim these out, and there's our belt pitch circle. So let's go to the path length dimension tool, and then we'll select all of these. 
well first I should make these constructions because you don't you can't edit them easily once you've two constructions once you've used the path length dimension tool. So there's our path length dimension and it gives us this number. But let's say we wanted it to be a belt that is I don't know let's say 150 teeth. So we do 150 teeth times 5, and then we don't need to do the divided by pi if we're just doing a pitch circle, because you can think of this as just a circle. And there we go. We have our belt pitch circle. And from there, we can go back to our drawing, and we can see if this is our pitch circle, then we need to know this distance right here to offset. It's going to be that far back. And then this far this way. So we can set this whole thing to our, we can determine this in the other drawing as well. But if we do the dual offset, it would be bidirectional and equal to 3.8 minus 2.06. Divided by 2. Oh, requires us to enter a real number and then edit it. <laughs> so we're going to make these two equal to each other. So this is going to be equal to this. And then we're going to come in here and paste our equation in. And there we go. We have the thickness of our belt. And then I should have included in our variable the belt width, but for now I'm just going to set it to 9, 9 millimeters wide. I'm going to use the midplane. And there you go. Let's say you want to add teeth to the belt. So what you can do is you can come in here and make a sketch on your, uh, your belt surface. And then we're going to have a line that comes out, and we're going to have this at a distance of what would this be? The 3.8, 3.8 millimeters. And then it doesn't matter exactly where this is positioned, so it won't be fully constrained. And then this is going to be equal to our 1.49 millimeter radius times 2. So that gives us our uh, tooth diameter, approximate, or tooth diameter approximately. And then we're going to set our distance to 2.06 from there to there. So that would be something like, oh, we also have to make this uh, tangent to the edge. Or in this case, perpendicular, not tangent. There's our 3.8. Oh, nope, because I thought something looked weird. 3.8 is to the, uh, the outside of our circle. So we'll make sure that these two are coincident and delete whatever that weird vertical constraint was. Auto applied. Mm -hmm. Where's our point? There it is. And we want it to be along that line, so 3.8. Point, point there we go. Our circle is ready to go. And then we'll just extrude through. So we'll extrude up to surface, and we'll pick this surface right here, and then selected contours. I selected, whoop, there we go. Selected the bottom part of the contour here, but you can select the whole thing. That might help it going around the curves a little bit. And then we want to make a curve that goes all the way around here. So that it'll follow. So we'll use the outside of the belt for this. So I started a new sketch. And then, oh wait, I think this has to be a 3D sketch, maybe. Let's see. 3D sketch. And I'm going to convert these entities here. I think you might be able to do this as a 2D sketch, too. I'm just more used to doing this part as a 3D sketch. And then once we have that, you go to your curves. And you do a composite curve, 
and it joins those lines into one curve, and then we'll use this to mirror our, or pattern our tooth around. So we'll pick our curve driven pattern, and direction, we're going to pick our curve over here, and then our feature, we're going to pick our tooth. And then how many teeth did we say we wanted on this belt? 150. So there we go. We have our 150 teeth. And then OK. And it'll take a second to load. because That's a lot of features. So the one thing that's missing from this belt right now are the fillets on the edges of the teeth. So to make these, you'll just pick your fillet tool and set your distance to, or your radius to, 0.43 millimeters and it's pulled from the drawing and then you'll select one of these and then select this connected to start loop 299 edges which checks out because we have 150 teeth and two fillets per tooth and then it'll take a minute to load to get our preview and then you can select your finish and now you have a once this <laughs> finishes there you go going to hide our composite curve. We have a timing belt with our teeth. It is very close to being fully dimensionally accurate. It's worked well enough for my purposes in the past. Um, there you go. HCD5 timing belt and then in the other tab we have our timing pulley. So you can put these together in assembly. And the nice thing about the pulley here is that it is parametric because you have your equations, and you can do a similar process. I just skipped over for the sake of time with our um, uh, timing belt here. That's all.